Um, I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, May 11th business meeting of Rona Borough Council. Uh, can we please uh, stand for the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which we stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Carpenter. Present. Mr. Matlin. Present. Um, Mrs. Walba. Present. Mrs. Provenza. Present. Mr. Suchovich. Here. Mr. Forbach. Uh, I'd like the record show that he's not here. He's absent. Correct. And Ms. Uh, Redzik Showalter. Present. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Alexander. Here. And Mr. Pitts. Here. All that's it. Everybody's here except for Mr. Corbin. Okay. Uh, I did not get any requests for um, registered comments from the public. Are there any additional agenda items that anyone wants to add at this time? Yes, I have uh, two of them. Okay. Um, Cribsfield uh -huh. construction and the code enforcement officer. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? All right. At this time, uh, we will take comments from the public. Please approach the podium, the podium or raise your virtual hand and clearly state your name and address and limit your comments to three minutes as much as possible. Oh, Rhoda, come on up. <laughs> Uh, Rhoda Wharf, 636 3rd Street, Verona. Um, these are just suggestions um, for perhaps a streets crew. Um, I'm not sure exactly who is in charge of it now. But if they would start cleaning the grates, because a lot of debris is collecting on them, and we spend so much money cleaning our sewers up, so it's like we're defeating our purpose. If they could, you know, get a handle on cleaning the grates throughout the town, of course. More so down at the bottom of the center is the worst. Uh, glass recycling. I've had several people approach me, and I'm also disappointed that we have not found a company to do glass recycling. I think it would be beneficial for us. Um, we can put it on the side of the um, garages. Uh, I don't know what companies are because I haven't done my homework, but I was hoping maybe one of you can. I mean, I can too, I guess. But I think it would be a, a good idea. And I noticed that the aluminum can container, whatever you call it, is out again. It looks very sloppy. Um, I don't know why it's up. I was told for the Boy Scouts, but we have no Boy Scouts here anymore, any troops. So I don't understand why it's here. Um, and also the recycling containers. I thought Mike was going to address those. And there was supposed to be a company across the river it was going to be more feasible for us, and yet that has yet to happen. And I'm wondering why. And also the aluminum cans, not to forget that. And lastly, there are a million unlicensed boats that are now literally garbage uh, on Art Street, which is very unfair for the people that live there, number one, and for the businesses there. And uh, at one time I had spoken to Mark, and he had said that there was some interested buyer and, and I guess that's why he wasn't addressing it. So I don't know if we can revisit that because it's very unsightly. It's not fair to anyone by having, and literally it's a, a dumping site with a fence around it. That's all it is. And I think that needs to be addressed immediately. Thank you. Okay, so just to be real quick here, um, I agree about the grades. The glass recycling, I don't know if that's possible. The aluminum can thing we're going to be talking about during the meeting is on the agenda. The recycling and Stanson, um, I only thing I can think of is that's because Mike is away and he didn't handle it. I, I can talk to you about that afterward. Tell you why the delay is. Okay. And in terms of the boats, I know that Brian has started getting rid of the one by one. There's somebody that is coming in and taking them. Okay, great. great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Rhoda, I think there's a recycling place in Creighton, but let me look into it and I'll get back with you on that. For glass? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Are there any other comments, Dave, uh, virtual hand raised? I don't see any. Okay, great. All right, then we'll continue on. Um, so to start off, we don't have any meeting minutes because um, nobody uh, was able to transcribe the minutes from the last meeting. It is recorded, it will get done, and when it does, we will approve the many meeting minutes at that time. Uh, in terms of the COVID protocol, I know probably we were a little over the top today, um, but uh, why are you laughing? I'll say no. <laughs> well, they, they're different opinions. You're, you're on the side of caution. That's what I did. I aired on the side of caution. And um, for the first time. But I want to hear opinions from people on council about um, where you think we are in regards to uh, the state of affairs with COVID, the CDC guidelines, um, Governor Wolf, and all of that. Um, I, I, I see that the cases are going way down. He's on the verge of lifting a lot of the um, restrictions, I think, as a Memorial Day. Maybe everything except leaving the mask thing. Um, so I, I'm not sure that in the future when we're having in-person meetings that we necessarily have the people have to have people take their temperature and fill out the form. But I want to see what other people think. So anybody have any comments on that? All of the CDC guidelines. I mean, you know, we made the thing about the temperature. Am I right? We made the agreement about the temperature and the, the, the signing of the papers. I mean, I, I think I think that could be by the wayside at this point, because like you say, the numbers are down. Uh, mask, I don't know, everybody, there's still a lot of people that are worried and nervous. Some people aren't. So I, and especially with everybody getting their shots, you know, I, I would, I don't know, I would possibly just say, just my opinion, optional on masks. But that's just my opinion. I don't know what everybody else's thoughts are. Well, I think the CDC and the state guidance for indoor gatherings is still to have masks. Till the 31st, Dave? No. No, even beyond oh, that. Oh, even after that? Until you're 70% oh, okay. vaccinated. Okay. I well, think there's... the guidance there for not wearing masks is if it's uh, everyone is confirmed to be vaccinated. I don't know that we really want to get into the situation of having to verify every person that steps into council chambers. I think it's easier to just say, for the time being, just keep wearing masks while we're indoors. For another couple months, what's the difference? I, I hopefully, right. hopefully in a couple months, uh, we're at a vaccination level in the state that, that we don't need to do that. But that's the guidance right now. And I think we should follow the, the guidance. Um, I, I do agree that the temperature checks are probably not necessary for everyone. Um, so I think just mainly the masks, if we're gonna be indoors in a group and we don't know how many people from the public may or may not show up. So I think it's, and we don't know their vaccination status, even though, you know, it's, it sounds like most of the council and everyone up here has, we, uh, you know, I don't think we can make assumptions just out of courtesy to the others that, you know, may be at, at risk. temperature to be taken or the form to be filled out uh, going forward, but we do want people to wear masks until Governor Wolf or President Biden or CDC says you don't have to. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, everybody, uh, we did have an exec session um, earlier this evening at six o'clock. And uh, just to catch you up, Mr. Dillmore is um, not going to be continuing with the borough 
he had a he had a family uh, death and a very significant one for himself, and so he's he's working on all of that. So um, we decided to go and see if there was somebody else who would be willing to work for us in an administrative capacity on an interim basis, and we found the former. Borough Manager of Oakmont. So her name is Lisa Jensen. We spoke with her today um, for a little bit. And um, I think everybody is pretty much in agreement and consensus that we would like to have her come and work with us uh, for up to three months, it may be less. If it's more, we'll handle that at that time. She would be able to start on May 19th. So, um, I, one day he said he was going to make the motion. Where'd he go? Oh. Uh, there's people can't hear you too as that well. Oh, okay. So, let me know if that continues. Okay. So, anyway, I'm getting to the point to ask for a motion to um, hire Lisa Jensen uh, under the parameters outlined uh, in her offer and uh, with the contract subject to our solicitor approval. Does anybody want to make that motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. First by Mr. Matlin, second by Sylvia Preventa. Any other questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. All right, so at this point now, we're going to be um, hearing from Susan Parkenberry regarding our next steps in hiring a borough administrator on a permanent basis. And uh, she is helping, as promised, to lead us through this process. And she has some things to present to us this evening. Is it time? It's time. Thanks for your patience. I can't hear real well, so please um, uh, continue to grant me your indulgence. Good evening, uh, members of council and mayor. Um, it's nice to see all of you at the dais. It uh, lifts my heart to see life creeping back to um, in-person events, and uh, it's not the greatest audio, but it's worth it to see you all at your official post in the very nice Verona Municipal Building. Um, Dave, is it okay if I share my screen? Is Dave gone again? Yes. But I yes. I think you can. Okay, I'm trying great. to adjust the volume. Sure, we're good. Dave, I can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know why it's this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to try to keep this nice and short. So if it's okay with everybody, I'm just going to dive right in. Is that okay? Great. Great. Okay, so um, this, what you see on my screen right now is um, a packet that's on its way to you. It is the summary of the work that you have all done since the last time uh, we met, which was, um, um, I think, the 27th when um, you were in uh, your, your workshop meeting where the budget amendment was approved and the discussion about the way to proceed and the title for the position um, was discussed. Uh, what was to happen and what did happen with a number of you since then was uh, comments to be provided to a pro forma position description. Um, and this little slide that I have up on the screen is just to review the progress that we've made so far. So we got started with an administrative review that revealed a number of budget problems and precipitated the budget amendment, which the meeting happened on the 17th where you all rolled up your sleeves and attacked the budget and made um, adjustments for 2021, and then made that amendment and then decisions about going forward for your administrative position. Um, so this report that I will be sending to you, don't worry, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, what this whole experience has given us an opportunity to do is basically form the Verona story, if you will. So I want to go over with you sort of the Verona story, which is, um, you know, people think in stories. Storytelling is the most compelling way to communicate. And so as we think about attracting a top-notch candidate for your position, what's Verona's story? I also have the ad. 
and a schedule I'd like to review. So what I'm going to present to you now is the brochure. Now I know it's unusual to think about a job having a brochure, but um, this is the brochure that I'm proposing that we utilize and get out there in the world. There'll be an advertisement as well, but it's important to tell Verona's story that Verona Borough is seeking a borough secretary. So I have um, uh, exercised some creative license having listened to you hopefully um, very well in the last few months and also taking in what you said in the job description to put together this story. So um, the borough of Verona is hiring a borough secretary and um, you're looking for a candidate. I'll just read this part to you. We are looking for a candidate willing to work with borough council to develop our organization and fulfill the potential of our community. We're going through a renaissance in Verona. Council has taken responsibility for addressing the borough's administrative capacity and financial challenges. This is foundational for our community to develop and improve the quality of life for all the citizens. We see the borough secretary position as a professional position with room to grow. Borough Council recently examined the borough's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We value our history, geography, and rapport among many community groups, businesses, and individuals. We are emerging into one of the region's most sought after communities. We know to continue that, we need a municipal organization that is steadily supporting our priorities by improving the delivery of key administrative services. The focus of the Verona Borough Secretary job is administrative competence and know-how, performing the administrative work of running the borough office, including managing requests for service, overseeing the fulfillment of those requests, and supporting the work of our council boards and commissions. Working with borough department heads and staff to deliver programs and services, serving as the central point of contact for borough residents and councils, the borough secretary will provide accessible and friendly service to all, even if every request cannot be filled. Fiscal prudence and attention to detail, facilitating the completion of the annual budget process, monthly bill payment and reports, and the annual financial report. In addition, the borough secretary will be on top of all required local, state, and federal filings. Coordination and communication supporting the good flow of information and sound policy making through the coordination of people and processes, including the third party professionals working with the borough, such as the engineer, solicitor and code enforcement officer, administering the various technological platforms and tools needed to accomplish excellence in communication. Qualifications and how to apply. And this is the details about uh, the job requirements, including a bachelor's degree in public administration or a related field, three or more years of administrative experience or equivalent combination of education, certification, training and experience. This is, uh, will actually be a brochure that you will all have your hands on. You can put it out on LinkedIn. You can share it with as many um, uh, people far and wide, but it's not actually the advertisement. The advertisement, um, will be um, advertised in a number of locations, including Local Government Academy, Western Pennsylvania Managers Association. Uh, I would recommend the Boroughs Association, uh, perhaps um, um, Connect, uh, Higher Ed, I can help you with all of that. Um, the ad will be placed in all of those places. But in addition to that, this brochure is available for LinkedIn for you to share in your individual LinkedIn profiles to share with other governments. This brochure lets you do that because it's a promotional piece and you're asking them to walk that around. Um, and then lastly, the website would need to be updated for the Google form and file upload for people's resumes, um, cover letters and um, references. The advertisement itself looks like this uh, and that reads, uh, Verona Borough is seeking qualified applicants to fill the role of Borough Secretary, and then more information, um, much more formal in terms of an ad. Um, and then lastly, uh, the, just to fill you in on the job description, sorry, there's a lot of pages to these documents. 
Some of the recommended questions are here, which we're not going to review because you need those for the interview. But the actual job description, I want to uh, update you. We heard from, or I heard from, I believe, and if I skip anybody, just yell out, a Trish and Dave and Nancy and Sylvia on the Google Doc comments. And so I integrated everything that you said there um, with my own knowledge and experience um, in helping with these kinds of searches um, to update the job description um, with the emphasis on the administrative uh, financial communication, the, 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 the core competencies that we're promoting in our brochure. Um, so this is coming out to you as well. Um, and like I said, I use that, uh, that feedback to not only uh, edit this document, um, and I also use that to tell the Verona story. Um, so uh, the schedule, I can find it. Sorry, bear with me one second. Okay, and this came up a few minutes ago um, and I wanna um, commend council for taking the proactive steps to engage uh, Mrs. Jensen for um, the period through the summer. Hopefully this goes as quickly as possible, but this is a conservative schedule that I've estimated that you, know, you can tweak, um, but assuming that um, we are good to proceed with this advertisement and uh, promoting of the brochure as soon as possible. Um, the next step would be to get that out there and set a deadline of June 11th, which is one month from today for submissions to be entered. And then at your next meeting on May 25th to meet an executive session to finalize those pay and benefit parameters that have been discussed numerous times in the budget, but just wanna make sure you have a sharp eye to what those are. Then on June 15th, you would be able to do your first round of interviews in executive session. And this would be um, my recommendation is that you all participate in those interviews as willing and able. And then on June 29th, which is your next scheduled meeting, you could have second and final interviews, um, or you could actually schedule a special meeting if you wanted to accelerate that a little bit faster. July 13th would be the earliest that I think that you could appoint a candidate or again, you could schedule a special meeting to do that. And then you could establish a late, latest possible hire date or start date of August 2nd, assuming that the candidate would need some time to um, you know, uh, leave their, their, their existing position. So the schedule um, is in there as well for your um, approving and tweaking um, and I think that's everything I wanted to discuss with you, the schedule, the, the Verona story, the job description. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be sending this packet out to you. It has a number of confidential questions as well that you should consider in, in my advice um, for the interviews. Um, and uh, you know, it's a complete packet of information on the status. So uh, that's all I have to say. I'm sorry, I've been looking at my screen, not at you guys. So if there's any questions or comments, uh, Dr. Carpenter, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Susan. Um, so other than taking uh, questions and comments from council about everything you just uh, shared with us, it's my impression that we want to spend a little time on the job description. Is that true? Um, well, so my suggestion is now that I, I again, we were de getting comments up and through yesterday. Um, I'm going to send you this packet now. I can I can also review what the job description says if you'd like me to. Um, I think since there was a lot of uh, comments uh, from several sure. of the board members, maybe we should go over the salient points and where there might have been some questions on the sure. Job Sure, and um, can you see my screen still? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, as I recall from our meeting on the 27th, you know, one of the things we discussed is manager versus secretary. And I think one of the things that made an impression upon me was maybe um, sort of getting, uh, we were getting tripped up as a group over the title secretary. Um, think of it like the secretary of state, you know? I mean, it's a, it's a title, but it's, it's um, not necessarily sort of that, that traditional, maybe administrative assistant. I mean, even the term secretary has evolved into administrative assistant. 
Um, but the consensus that evening was to talk about borough administration in the context of a borough secretary, because that is a position recognized in the borough code. So um, this is a professional, so I'll just highlight some of these things. This is a professional and administrative position. Um, it serves as an integral part of the borough. So that's administrative policy, accomplishes goals and strategy, works performed under limited supervision. The secretary reports to borough council, uh, but you know, day in and day out, they are in charge of their own schedule and some an exercise initiative and independent judgment. They have to interpret and implement policies and procedures, supervise contracted business relationships, including uh, the contracted bookkeeper, and also all the information technology, including the copier, the phone system, Google Drive, the website, and so on. Um, the individual will work as part of a team with department heads to support the policy making of borough council and assure smooth administration. And then there's a list of major job responsibilities. And I don't know if you want me to go through all of these, um, but again, facilitates communication and cross-functional and interdepartmental teams. Um, just prepares and distributes the agendas and the minutes. Um, uh, makes 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 um, all formal filings of uh, you know publication and of the ordinances and advertising of meetings and so on complies with the uh, borough code. Um, acts as the open records officer, uh, ensures compliance with the open records rules. Also responds to requests for information from the employees and from the public. Documents, processes, and forms for the borough for both internal and external users to maintain a consistent and accurate administrative process, makes records electronically accessible through electronic means, including cloud-based sharing or other distributed platforms, oversees the accounting system and general ledger, supervises and directs the accounts receivable and accounts payable transactions and supervises third-party accounting services, follows procedures of internal control, processes a bi-weekly payroll, assures payroll and related expenses are posted to the general ledger, prepares monthly financial reports for borough council, oversees the preparation of the annual budget and completes the annual independent audit, maintains the borough's record system and keeps it up to date, um, all the agreements, minutes, so on, um, maintains uh, no lien letters uh, and other direct services to the public, maintains the borough calendar to assure essential deadlines and legal requirements for meeting notices and advertisements are met, serves as the principal staff, contact overseeing contracted IT, completes required filings to DCED and others, distributes the financial interest statements, files ordinances and proof of publications on time, uh, maintains the um, borough calendar for all the boards, commissions, and borough government committees as established by council and publishes that calendar on the borough website or other communications and maintains listing of all officials, terms of office, as well as personnel files for borough employees and assures security and confidentiality of personal information. And so there's some basic sort of business and administrative requirements in terms of technology and digital literacy, and then the specifications for education and experience that we talked about a little bit ago. Okay, does this help with the audio? If I have this microphone by me? I can hear you well right now, Nancy. Okay, great. So Janet and I will use this and anybody else who you can't hear. Um, there were some comments about um, uh, responsible for land use ordinances and something about um, keeping track of terms of individuals appointed to commissions and boards. Uh, Am I missing something? Did you have that in there or did you have your Yeah, the, 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 the terms of offices and the calendar are in there. The zoning officer is not in there. That is, uh, if you go back to the original administrative review before um, sort of the fiscal constraints were fully known, it is recommended that you grow the position to 
um, a borough manager zoning officer position. Um, and that, you know, is different from this job in the sense that it is, there's, there's a greater level of expertise and um, experience maybe or knowledge and some training to be the zoning officer. Um, you have a zoning ordinance, but you also have uh, aspirations of doing an updated comp plan and uh, probably a new zoning ordinance. So as you work um, as, a, as a council to develop those things and you are supported administratively getting those done, hopefully that also gets you time to um, make other organizational improvements such as were recommended in the administrative consultancy and the cash flow so that you can um, expand the duties to be inclusive of that. In the, in the short term, you have an existing zoning ordinance that is administered by your um, code officer um, that's, that's um, not quite the same as having um, you know, an individual on staff that, that is like Churchill or Edgeworth Borough where the manager is the zoning officer, Jackson Township also the same, um, which is really a, a great setup, but um, something to reach for. Um, the changes about, you know, like who's in, who's in office and the calendar that you mentioned, Nancy, those were included. Okay, thanks. Um, so I think a concern that I have that I noticed in the comments is what do we do in the meantime? For instance, um, the young man that is assigned to us from BIU really doesn't have any zoning experience at all. And while we don't have an overwhelming number of zoning issues, there are a couple that are going on right now. And uh, I just wondered what your suggestion would be on how to handle that. Well, I mean, I don't know what, yeah, I don't know what those specific issues are as far as, um, you know, zoning reviews. Um, your, 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 your BIU folks probably have someone else in the office with greater competency if that's needed. Um, certainly in consultation, you know, with um, the engineer and the solicitor for those one-off instances that require uh, greater expertise. Uh, and your good neighbors, um, you know, at, at Oakmont or, or some of the other um, members of the municipal management community can probably help your um, staff member, um, you know, call balls and strikes as we like to say, and, um, you know, bring in the additional professional support that you might need like a planning consultant. Okay, that, those are great suggestions, thank you. What about anybody else? Do you have any questions on the job description? So the second bullet point specifies preparing the meeting agenda. Did we not want to add also preparing the meeting minutes to that bullet point? You know, Trish, it's then the second, it's the it's the next one down. It's bullet point three. Got it. Thank you. They could be together or not. You know, one of the things, and I know this was a discussion, but I did leave the existing language stand here under the major job responsibilities. You know, you do your best to describe uh, the work involved in a job description, but, you know, it's not necessarily descriptive of all the stuff. It's a living document. It has to be changed and tweaked as time goes on. Um, so anything that's omitted from this doesn't preclude you guys from asking for that work to be done, right, and, and continuing the evolution of the position. Um, it's, it's a snapshot in time of what you're reaching for and setting some, you know, guide rails um, as you as you make a hire, um, but there you know there could be changes over time. There should be changes over time. Again, is the change consistent with the overall direction that the borough is headed and needs to go? Those would be the questions. I think the temptation, and I caution boards about this all the time. The temptation is to look at it from a position of need. Right? We need this. We need that. We need this, and so you tend to throw everything in the kitchen sink into that. Um, I want to encourage you in terms of, you know, what, what, uh, what you, what you, at, what are essential as, as, as given everything else that's going on in the borough and, and scoping that to get this higher underway. And then, like I said, look at it as part of a living, breathing document 
that you can um, change as the borough evolves. You know, one of the things we talked about when we compared managers and secretaries is the budget. So this talks about the role the borough secretary has in preparing the budget. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means preparing, you know, the Excel spreadsheet that shows income and expenditures. That means maybe getting the historical information ready so that council has trend information so they can make decisions. That means going to the meeting and supporting the committees and the council's discussion on that. That's very different than a manager's presented budget. Um, I, um, for example, I just uh, I teach this class at Pitt, and so I had the stu every year I have the students review a municipal budget, and this year they reviewed South Fayette Townships. So if you go out and look at South Fayette Township, when the manager prepares that budget, um, he is preparing a fully completed recommended budget. Council never sees the line items, if you will, until that work is done, and he presents that with a message and the justification and how does this fit in the long range plan and what's our capital and so on. That's the difference between where you're going and where you are right now. Right now you need consistent preparation of that accurate and um, historically informed spreadsheet. But the direction you could get to someday is a manager's presented budget. And if that happened, this job description would change and it would say um, you know, something different than what it says now in terms of budget and finance. Great, uh, that, that's very helpful, Susan, thank you. Um, anybody else have any questions or comments at this time about the job description? I think the job description looks really good. Um, I feel like it, it captures what, uh, we talked about in previous meetings and, and what, I, what, uh, what was discussed. Um, I think the, the brochure uh, to, to try to sell the position, I, I think is, looks really good so far. Um, so so I, I appreciate this, Susan, thank you. Yeah, I put the brochure back up on there because you know, we're, we're, we're people, not computers, we think in stories. And so these are the four major bullet points, right? About what the secretary's job is about in Verona. Competency and no, you know, administrative competency and know-how, working with the department heads and staff to deliver programs and services, fiscal prudence and attention to detail and coordination and communication. And so some of the other materials that I'll send to you, one of them is a guide for, you know, conducting questions in an interview that are well aligned with what you're looking for. You know, it's not like sort of 25 generic questions. It's question, how do you ask questions about what you see on a candidate's resume to draw out of them what they could do really well and how they might be a match for Verona. And some do's and don'ts too, but I know Craig is there to help keep you out of trouble on that. Um, so um, if, you, if you, we just keep our, in our mind these four priorities, right? And then um, uh, engage with candidates to learn how they could be a fit. I'm, I'm hopeful that you know, this job sells itself. That's, that's what I'm hopeful for. Is there anything we need to do right now in terms of making, oh, is there anything we need to do now in terms of making any motions, adopting this job description, anything like that? Well, here's um, I, I, uh, that's that's a good question. I I um, I think that when you adopted the budget and when you made the decision on the twenty seventh to proceed with this, um, that you've made the decision that you need to make in terms of of what to, where where you're going. Um, I I don't know that I think that the job description is. Um, I mean, you could accept my report or you could wait until we meet on the. Uh, like I said, on the uh, um, at that next coming at that next meeting, because you are going to receive this tonight, okay. except the report. Then the the only thing I would ask is that in that intervening time that we stick with. Um, sorry, I have to roll back up the report. This schedule, uh, and I was I'm not sure who is manning um, the website these days, but if we could. Um, work together to get um, the ad as, as drafted and the brochure up there as well as, I mean, I have a, I have a share file 
that I can, uh, you know, create a folder for Verona and give you all access to that people can upload their their resumes and cover letters to. Um, but I don't know, is that Dave or Trish or? <laughs> yeah, it's me for the moment. So Dave, if you and I could work to, you know, just create a Google form where people basically fill out a quote unquote application and then they upload, um, that would start to collect that information. You know, well, you don't get you don't get a lot of utility out of advertising, in my opinion, um, in in less targeted way with like ZipRecruiter or something. You're just going to get bombed with resumes, um, and you got you know they're hard to sort through. So I I, I think this approach of really reaching out. Um, you know, to not only the 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 um, well-known sources of these. Oh, I left one out on this as well. Uh, I was going to say well-known sources of of jobs in the in the in the government sector. I left out um, nonprofit talent, which is a very affordable ad that gets quite a bit of um, uh, circulation as well. But then relying, like I said, on uh, your professional contacts and providing the brochure. Um, that that tends to be the most productive way to get top candidates. So Dave, if you'll help me build the form and uh, we'll put the file uploader in there. Um, then like I said, on May 25th, uh, you can meet an executive session to just hammer out the, the greater details um, of the pay and benefits. And, and hopefully you'll have some you know, resumes trickling in at that point, getting ready for that first round of interviews on June 15th. Okay. Great, so uh, we'll do more of the details in two weeks and there's nothing more we need to do about that for tonight. My understanding, okay. Yep. Unless, unless anyone has anything that, you know, they, they uh, need, <clears throat> want to say, I, that's what I would, that's what I su yeah. suggest. Any, uh, any more comments, questions about this? Okay, all right, thank you so much, Susan. Really, really helpful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. With that, yeah, you broke I'm, up. Oh, what's the matter? Nothing. Oh. Am I done sharing? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Dave? Oh, stop share. There we go. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, then we're going to move on to Mayor Recupero. Thank you. Uh, a couple of real quick things. Uh, food drive that we've been having um, on Wednesday. Um, Mr. Rosenberg, Rick Rosenberg said that it's going to be the next three weeks, the 13th, 20th, and 27th. It'll start at 11 a.m. until it runs out. The last one that they had, I believe, was um, uh, in April. They gave out 300 mils. So that was a very big success. So these are the last three. The 13th, 20th, and 27th of May at 11 a.m. until it runs out. Mayor, can I just ask a question? What's up on the calendar is um, the 12th, 19th, and 26th. It's on Wednesdays. Wednesday is my, uh, you know what? This is, I'm sorry, this is 20. This calendar is no good. Oh, that's 20. Let me see your calendar. Yeah, that's the wrong yeah, calendar. The 12th, 19th, and 26th. <laughs> Yes, uh, 12th, 19th, and 26th at 11 a.m. till it runs out. I apologize. Had the wrong calendar. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the other thing, the street closing on the 20, um, 22nd and 23rd of May. Uh, the um, East Railroad Avenue will be um, shut down uh, in order to have the, um, the Garden Club's event there. Uh, so it'll be shut down for two days. It, it'll be shut down like from 10 a.m. till um, probably five or six o'clock each day, just to let you know on that. Uh, handicap parking, uh, we got a request from a gentleman on. Um, on um, North Avenue, 405 North Avenue, a Dell uh, P R E I. S A C H. He's requesting a handicap parking. He does have all the uh, forms filled out from his doctor. So I would need a motion on that. I'll take a motion for handicap parking space at 405 North. Second. Oh, I didn't make it. Oh. <laughs> you want to be first? Yeah, I'll make that motion. Okay, thanks. For uh, disability parking at 405 North Avenue. Second. 
second by Mr. Sevcevich. Any other questions or comments? Um, I just wonder, when we do this, then does that mean that they put up a handicapped parking sign and they paint this side the, the curb blue? Yes. Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passed. Okay, two more real quick things. Um, gentleman on School Street, He's selling his house and he called the code enforcement officer and they came and checked his house. Everything was good. It, pa it, was, it passed other than uh, he needs to um, put um, carbon monoxide detectors in. And uh, he's been trying to call the company. He's been trying to call the gentleman. His name is Matt and he's getting no response. Um, we need to address that. When our residents ask for something, this, these companies need to get back to us than to the residents. We're paying them, they're not paying us. So I don't know who's gonna handle that. To call this company and say our residents have been trying to get a hold of a gentleman on School Street and we need to uh, resolve this as soon as possible. He wants to sell his home. He can't until he gets it signed off. Yeah. I have some challenges getting in touch with Matt. His phone hasn't been working. Then properly. we need to, we as uh, the board, the president needs to call the company itself and say, we got a problem with this guy. Give us somebody else. And what have they said? Well, Matt has been going to the AT&T store trying to get his phone working. And when I can't get in touch with him by phone, I text him. And when that doesn't work, I call Mr. Jacobs, Sean Jacobs, who is the other person that we've met in part of the process. So. Um, I believe I have Mr. Bruni's number, but if I don't, I'll get in touch with you and I will do my best to, to get them to get back to him. Okay, I think this needs to be resolved as soon as possible. Tomorrow. Okay, thank you, because he's going to call me back. Okay. The other thing is, um, I've been in touch with Matt about Cribs Field, and I feel it's up to the board. Anytime we do a job, we need to put a timeline on when it's going to be done, and I, I understand that there's uh, weather to contend with and what have you, but um, I've been noticing, uh, you, you know, the guy's done a fine job, but uh, it seems like he's not there a lot of times. We, we, we need to set a um, deadline when this is going to be done. It's going to be dragging on. We're going into the middle of May, and um, yeah, there's no action going on up there. Uh, it looks like it's all inside work pretty much, you know, under roof. But I don't, every time I go by during the afternoon, I don't see, very rarely do I see anybody there. And like I said, I understand the uh, weather and what have you, but there needs to be a timeline. And if there's um, back order on material, we need a punch list to see what is back ordered, what's not available. And I understand a lot of things are um, questionable anymore. I have no idea why, but building material is big questionable. We're, we personally are running into this problem with a lot of our um, products. So Matt could address that at his time or whenever he wants to. And it's up to the board to say, hey, we need this done at, you know, by this time. And that's my opinion. Have they given a projected date at all, David? Yeah, I'll touch on the, under my report on that. That's okay. all I have. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Police chief's report. Are you giving that? Yeah, I'm going to give the police chief's report. Uh, complaints received 119. Total crimes reported 22. Total crimes cleared 19. Total persons arrested 6. Crime code summary issued 1. Vehicle code summary issued 8. Borough code summary 5. Borough parking tickets 56. Magistrate fines. Collected is $1,757.99. Borough fines and fees collected $325. Um, there was no amusement or police reports. Municipal, municipal fines $21.71. Total fines and fees collected is $2,104.70. Parking permit fees, $1,666. need a motion to accept that. I'll make a motion. Motion, Mr. Sechevich. I'll second. Second by Mr. Natlin. Any questions or comments? All those uh, in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.
That's all I have, Madam President. Um, I uh, am looking for, does anybody have that EMS report? Jamie, Jamie sent it in. Um, Jamie sent it in an email. Yeah, do you want me to pull it up? Yeah, please. Uh, well. Oh, wait, I, while you're doing that, let's have the fire chief report. Very slow month. Three, we had three fire calls this month. Okay. Anything else from the fire department? Nothing tonight. Okay. Thank you. I have the fire. I have the the EMS. Is it April twenty twenty one? Yeah. Yes. 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 You want me to read it? Sure. Uh, April twenty twenty one ALS emergency. Uh, 16 BLS emergency seven canceled six refusals eight false calls one deceased on arrivals two total emergency response responses 40. Also lower valley ambulance subscriptions are out. Each subscription helps us to care for you and your loved ones. It also saves your money on your co payments. Mm -hmm. That is the uh, ambulance report. Oh. Okay, thank you. But I got to back up because I think I forgot to ask for a motion to approve the fire chief report. I'll make that motion. Okay. Motion by Mr. Matlin, second. Second. Second by Mrs. Lalbo. Any uh, questions or comments on the fire chief report? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, with the EMS report again, need a motion to approve the EMS report. I'll make it. Uh, by Mr. Suchovich, second. Second. Second by Mrs. Lovalvo. Any other questions or comments on the EMS report? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Um, I'd like to just say a, a quick thing about Jamie Lavelle. I don't know if this is appropriate or not. Jamie's going through a lot of health issues right now. I know we all got the email. So I just want to send some prayers out to Jamie and, and Laura Valley and hope, hope that he uh, he recovers from his troubles. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Ray. Um, okay, it looks like uh, Mr. Alexander, you're up next. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. Number one on my blisters report is IRS. Uh, just suffice it to say that we are working on some IRS issues. Uh, Rachel from Bookminers uh, has uh, forwarded me some documentation. Susan forwarded me some documentation. I don't have a full report on that right now. I'm continuing to work on it. Uh, I, every now and again, every few days, it seems like there's additional documentation that, that I receive. I hope to have a full and complete report on that at the workshop meeting at the end of the month. Next on uh, my report is 753 uh, ARB. That is uh, Adam uh, Alan Lee's uh, spa. Uh, as a lot of people know, he has relocated from Oakland to Verona and has been a nice addition to the boulevard. Uh, there's been a question as to whether the massage aspect of the spa is permissible in the in the uh, in the in the business district in the commercial district um, we do have a standalone massage parlor ordinance which outlaws <coughs> massages of a, of a sexual nature but not massages of a of a in a spa type area there there is language in our uh, zoning ordinance that talks about in the commercial zone that lists a number of permitted uses spas are not a permitted use but there is a section under conditional use that says that if you are a business that's closely similar to the listed and enumerated businesses in the commercial district, district you could be a commercial, you could, you could be a conditional use in that district. That would not require a variance. There are beauty shops permitted uh, by definition in the commercial zone. I think that a spa is very similar to a uh, beauty shop. So 
this board could consider that to be a conditional use and not require zoning hearing board approval. But what I've learned in my investigation is that this business has been operating in Verona for close to a year now. He's in business. Mark has previously inspected it and, and given him an occupancy permit. And my understanding was speaking to the lawyer is that uh, he was aware that there were massage areas when he inspected it. He inspected the plumbing and the water to those areas so that they could have proper water. They expended money uh, in reliance on what he was told. And there's a, there's a concept in the law, it's called a vested right, uh, the vested rights doctrine. And what that doctrine says is that if the borough gives you advice and it turns out to be erroneous, but you, re you relied on that advice to your financial peril, you went out and spent money uh, relying on that advice, then you, have, you may have what's called a vested right. It can also be referred to as a variance by estoppel. Uh, it was never granted to you, but, you, but you're stopped from saying that you don't have it. So that's another argument that he has. In fact, I think that's a strong argument that he has, uh, that he's entitled to move forward without having to come back with uh, for either conditional use or a, a, a variance hearing, which I don't think he needs. I think that it could can be considered a conditional use right here. So I want to talk to, to council. We didn't have a chance to talk about it as executive session. My advice to council would be to move forward as a vested right. It grants no precedential value to any other business that may come in uh, to, the, to the borough. Uh, of that nature. I know that Mark was very, very adamant that uh, massage parlors aren't admitted, uh, uh, permitted in the borough anywhere and fought hard to keep them out. But this, even though uh, the, the standalone massage parlor definition says any business that offers massages is a massage parlor, it further defines what are the illegal massage parlors in the body of the ordinance. So my advice is to the board is that uh, Mr. Lee has acquired a vested right based on his reliance on uh, what was told to him uh, through the inspection process and their expending money uh, on that <coughs> advice. So I think that the board has the discretion of allowing him to move forward and continue operating with no further relief necessary for him. Okay, so that involves a motion. That would involve a motion if you want to go that route. Wait, can yeah. I ask a question? Yeah, let's get a motion on the floor and, and we'll. Okay. Well, this is good. Can someone uh, make a motion? Take a motion. I'll go ahead and make that motion. I'll second. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, any questions or comments on the motion? Go ahead. I have a question. Under uh, conditional uses, Possibly, is he saying the massage is medicinal purposes? Right. He's saying it's 40% of his business, but it's, it's, it's not like a massage parlor. <coughs> they come in there for spa purposes, relaxation purposes, and things like that, medicinal purposes, right. spa related, beauty shop related, things of that nature. Yeah, for a long time. And, my, and by all accounts, very well respected. Yes, I was just going to say the reviews on him were very, very good. So he's probably a very above board person. I don't know him. I'm just repeating what I've been told. But I thought maybe that would fall under medicinal purposes. Absolutely. Okay, thank you for, for answering. Any other questions or comments about this? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, aye. Any opposed? All right, so that's that's good. I, I have some stuff to clean up on on, on the material. I have to return to that. So next uh, is four four three north. Uh, we're moving forward with a zoning hearing board meeting with regard to that property. Uh, residents in the area did file for that uh, a few weeks ago. Harry Gilmore, when he was here, and I picked the zoning hearing board date. I think it was the, the, the fourth Thursday of the month, which is the, the date that uh, Mark had uh, set forth on the monthly calendar for zoning hearing board meetings. And Harry was going to get that into the, into the newspaper, but unfortunately, he did not 
due to uh, the health issues with his father. So I am going to uh, pick a new date uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, I need I need two weeks uh, to do that because it has to be advertised once each week for two consecutive weeks in order to get it properly advertised. Now, I'll coordinate with Janet Burkhart on that. Uh, I don't think that anybody in, in council cares one way. I guess there are certain dates when we can't hold things here. Uh, not on Thursdays that I'm aware of. Okay. So I will coordinate with Janet tomorrow and get that uh, in the newspaper by Friday uh, for our first advertisement. Okay, great. Craig, can I ask what the zoning? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Can I ask what this is for, the zoning hearing board? Yes. Mark issued a uh, a zoning permit uh, that that they are, I believe, the the zoning permit was that they were able to uh, go from a single family back to a multi-family, and the, the residents in the community have challenged Mark's uh, uh, decision or or interpretation and challenged that zoning permit. Okay. Thank you. The final thing I have is the community garden property. I'm going to uh, uh, defer a lot to Trish on that, but um, there's two ways to go about acquiring this community garden property, in my opinion. Once is through one way is through the Allegheny County Vacant Property Program, and another is through the condemnation or eminent domain process. Uh, Trish has all of the information with regard to the, the Allegheny County community, Allegheny County vacant pro property program. And I'll let her talk on that, but I think I read where it might take up to two years to acquire that property, if I'm not wrong. I don't know. Uh, uh, if you go the eminent domain route, we, we can have it as quickly as 30 days. Um, but we have to look and see which is, which is quicker. And if we do end up going through Allegheny County, Maybe there's a way for the heir of uh, the property owner to grant Verona a license to let them on the property now, uh, as until you wait for the Allegheny County approval. So I will follow up on that when when Trish gives her report. That's all I have to report on at this moment. Right to know. Oh, I'm sorry. Right to know. Thank you. Uh, we received a, a right to know request. <clears throat> from a Carrie Gordon, a paralegal from a, to a law firm. Uh, and, and they are requesting fire department records, run a vol uh, volunteer fire department. Uh, records of any re records of any kind relating to uh, a certain fire. So uh, the right to know law states that while fire departments can, under limited circumstances, limited circumstances, be considered a local agency, they're traditionally not. Um, if, if the borough doesn't, uh, they're not an arm of the borough. If they don't have any oversight power substantially to the fire company, they're not a local agency, and therefore these documents that they're requesting are not public documents. I am responding to the uh, right to know uh, request indicating that the Verona Fire Department doesn't operate out of the borough building and they are not an arm of the fire department and therefore the uh, records are not public. And then the applicant, the requester will have thir uh, 14 business days to file an appeal to the Office of Open Records and then the matter will be decided through the Office of Open Records. And I'm, I'm pretty confident our position would be upheld under that legal theory. Okay. Thank you, Nancy. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So their request, and what kind of records you must create? Records from a fire. We, we get a lot of requests at the fire station from insurance companies. And we send them off, they send us a check to report, you know, just to report. But they're not, they're, you, you're not subject to the right to know act, in my opinion. Okay. You guys can talk more yeah. about that offline. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, okay, up next is Mr. Pitch, our engineer. Thank you. Um, we're moving forward with scheduling the pre construction meeting for First Street. I was talking with the contractor. 
Um, we're looking to wait for school to be out um, before proceeding with uh, any of the construction. That way there's less traffic and the kids aren't walking around the, the construction area. Um, so as I have more information on that, I will be sure to pass that out. The, uh, at the last meeting, we did a um, resolution for the Act 152 demo list. Uh, so that was submitted to the county. Uh, that included two of the um, structures um, that were applied for under the CD 46 and the North Avenue structure that we had discussed. Um, as the mayor had stated with the pavilion, I had talked with him and then talked with the contractor this week on that. I did um, get some updates on things. It, it looks to be the, the roof is possibly starting Saturday, if not Monday, uh, for the metal roof. Uh, the doors and door locks should be finished up uh, Friday. Uh, this week, he was doing some touch-ups on the fuel drain where some settlement had occurred and he was finishing off the ends on it, um, capping them with grates so nothing could be shoved into the pipes there. Um, and then on the interior, uh, they, we are waiting on Duquesne Light to get the new service for the electrical. Uh, I will touch base with them for an update on that. We did talk to them last week while the paperwork was in place. Um, Mark did his final inspection, so they should be scheduling their end of it any day now. Uh, tentatively, right now, uh, talking with him, they're shooting for uh, a June 2nd um, date. Not all the finishes might be finished at that point, but we're shooting for that the pavilion is usable at that point. Um, and as the mayor had said, there were was some complications with getting materials. Uh, one of those was with the roofing material. I had shown uh, people some colors tonight. Uh, those that aren't here, I'll make sure to email them to you. The company that was originally picked, when the order came in, only half the material came in. So he was able to go with a different uh, metal company, which the colors are slightly different. Um, so we just have to give him an idea of that and they're able to get it in this week. So that's why the roof is still on schedule for next week. Um, and then on my report, I just had a question on a few items. Uh, the PA Small Barn and Sewer Project for the CCTV condition ratings of the storm source. I know that was discussed um, that that match amount could uh, be held off until next year. Uh, I didn't know with the, the budget arrangements if that was still the case. Yeah, we did. Um, what was the match amount of, again on that? Uh, that was 33294 for the match. Okay. Yeah, I believe we did uh, defer that till um, next year. Okay, that's perfect. I just wanted to make sure. And then uh, same on the, the Center Street uh, storm extension. There was, um, that was just a, a budgeted expense. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, it was around 60000 Yeah, that we deferred until next year as well. Okay. I'll just make sure that both of them are ready to go and I'll hold off any type of advertisement or anything for them until next year. Um, the CDBG, uh, year 47, they have not um, announced the awards yet. That should be coming any day now from the county. One thing I did not have updated is the tree trimming. Um, after our last meeting, we, did, we talked about that. I had sent an email to Beaver Jack and their administrative email. Um, basically stating that until we received the documents that the borough asked for, none of the bill is going to be paid for. Uh, I had also CC'd Craig on that email, and to date we have no response from them. So as of now, we haven't made a, uh, a penny payment to them at all, and they haven't responded either. Okay. And then um, lastly, the um, last meeting we talked about the Greenways Trails grant and the DCNR grant. And the consensus was to uh, combine both applications for the Greenways Trail because the match amount is a, a lower match amount. Um, so I had done that. Uh, so if you remember the, the CITF grant we applied for that we were unsuccessful and included some repairs to play equipment, some additional new play equipment for some um, older generations. 
uh, some of the, some even equipment for herself, um, some walking path. So that that's all in there. Um, and then I also took the the restrooms and upgrades, uh, such as the resurfacing of the basketball court from the DCNR one, and put that in there. Um, so it puts us at a, a projected grant or projected project of $183,800. At the 85% grant, it would be $161,800. Or $161, and our match amount would be $22,000. Um, if everyone is okay with that, I, there would be a resolution that we have to pass for that uh, just to request the $161,800 in grant funds. And so everyone's aware as well, this is due May 31st. Uh, at the earliest, we probably would not hear award announcements until November. So any of this match would not come due until 2022 at the earliest. Matt, can any of the match be in kind? On the DCD um, grants like this, it, it's a strictly cash match. Okay. So I'm not totally, completely following. I know that we had some discussion about um, CITF and DCNR. And yes. This is combining. Um, and I'm confused how that relates to some other grant that was originally for like ninety-seven thousand and back to seventy-five thousand and what that grant for. I, I will talk about that. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that other one you're you're talking about, it doesn't have anything to do with the park. Okay. Uh this one was uh, a few months ago when the county opened up to uh, an additional round of CICF. We have, we had put two applications in, one for park improvements, one for alley reconstructions. Unfortunately, neither of them were selected for funding. And then at our last meeting, we had discussed the DCNR uh, project for Riverbank to uh, right. try to put restrooms down there. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. it had a 50% match yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, so that's when we discussed that this uh, Greenways Trails grant was coming up. So I went back into the CITF uh, grant. I made some adjustments. Originally, we, we were going to put um, rubber fall surfaces down which are very costly. So I, I, I pulled those back just to the, the mulch surfaces um, to, to tweak the budget and the scope a little bit. And then I added the restroom and some of the work from Riverbank in there. And then um, things like resurfacing, both basketball courts are in there, um, making minor repairs at the existing um, parks, uh, new swing sets where needed, um, some additional climbing um, equipment for older kids and and things like that um, to, to focus on trying to upgrade both parks and keep what's in good condition, repair what might need repair, and then just add some extra to it. Okay, that, that sounds great. I just hope, I mean, 22,000 in the scheme of things is not that much of a match. Um, and you're saying it, it wouldn't be due until next year at the earliest. At the, yeah, at the earliest, we would find out in November uh, with the contracts <clears throat> wouldn't even be signed and executed until probably around February. And then they are typically three to four year contracts. So if we wanted to jump on the ball, it, the match could be 2022. If not, it may even be 2023. So I'm thinking, I guess we could do that. Matt, Matt, are you are we locked in? Like I know you you sent out a list of scope items for that grant. Are we locked into those things, as far as this you know the line items and the dollar amounts? Um, like if we if we did decide you know a year from now that we wanted to tweak some of that, yeah, how much how much flexibility do we have? We can, we can um, as long as it's in the same general realm, they're they're pretty flexible with it. And with our uh, cost estimate and everything, we try to keep like. We don't say we're going to install this play. Mm -hmm. we, we just kind of put a general figure of fifteen thousand or whatever that might be, and then some of the benches and things like. So there's there's flexibility benefit, uh, built in, and then of course by then, um, if something else were to come up and there's a donation of something within the town, uh, we just go back and we we would request a, a scope change, and then as long as we demonstrate what we're going to put the 
the change to and the funds to. They've been very open to that in the past. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the things in that list, I, I do think are things that are needed. The, um, the play equipment, I don't know, would that be like a replacing kind for the play equipment or would we have options to maybe, you know, I see a lot of, a lot of other parks that, with newer play equipment, they have, um, you know, things for, uh, you know, that are more ADA accessible as far as swings and that sort of thing to get a, you know, reach a, a broader range of kids. Is, is that something you think yeah, that? Yeah, so I had looked at that when we did the, the CIPF and um, the, the structure at Cribs is, is an ADA structure. Okay. Um, and to buy new structures, they're very costly. Mm -hmm. So it's not in that bad of shape. There's some fading, there's some paint chipping, but some repairs can be made. To it. And then there's other items like you mentioned, like ADA swings and stuff. Mm -hmm. We were intending on putting some new swings up there so we can make them ADA swings. Uh, they even make infant swings for parents yeah. can swing with their kids. So that's all kind of open. Um, and then, but as far as the, the bulk of equipment, um, that was pretty much going to stay the same. Mm -hmm. with some repairs made. And, and same as Riverbank, that most of the equipment with some repairs, maybe some painting. Um, the one swing set was going to be re uh, replaced because it's only about three feet off the ground mm -hmm. at Riverbank there. Um, but we're, we're flexible into what type of swing set or what type of additional equipment we would put in. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, my only concern is that, I mean, I agree that all, all those things are needed. My only concern is that we're, we're already deferring a few capital projects to next year. And we're, we're still in the process of trying to develop a five-year capital plan. I know Matt, you and I, and, and uh, Mike have talked about doing that. And we were going to talk about it at our last um, finance and DPW committee meeting, but Mike had an, a, a personal emergency he had to attend to. So um, I think we're going to look to to really kick that off uh, at the next month's meeting, but um, I just want council to be aware that um, and the public that you know if if we you know if the if the grant goes through and we go forward with things like the CCTV, um, which I think we ha we will have to do, um, maybe the Center Avenue storm sewer extension is 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 optional, but. Um, we're going to have, you know, a few big projects next year that we're going to have to budget for. And uh, along with the sewer fund, um, you know, making that whole, we still have to develop a plan for that. So I just, um, you know, again, I'm not opposed to this grant. I just want us to be mindful that it's, it's going to add to the, to the challenging budget this fall. So. I did not have it printed because I wasn't sure if there was going to be comments on the, the scope or not, but I can read it in summary. Um, be it resolved that the borough of Verona of Allegheny County hereby request a Greenways Trails and Recreation Program grant in the amount of $161,800 from the Commonwealth Financing Authority to be used for the Verona Borough Park Improvement Project. Okay, I'll take a motion to pass that resolution. I'll make a motion to pass that resolution. Okay, second. Okay. Um, motion by Patricia Dick Showalter, second by Mr. Sutcevich. Any other questions or comments? Okay, um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so it's passed. So you'll send that. I'll email it to you for signature. Yes. Uh, Mr. Alexander, hold on. I, I forgot. Well, I, I thought that was done. Go ahead. Finish. Oh. Oh, and just one other thing that didn't make it onto my report I wanted to discuss. Uh, Sylvia had been in contact with Mr. Costa's office, and um, he had given us some information to apply for a grant. Um, it had no match amount with it. Uh, so I had met with her and Rhoda and we discussed it. Um, the focus on it was uh, public safety and, uh, and, and police upgrades. So what we had submitted to uh, Senator Costa's office was for um, 
additional cameras at intersections, uh, an additional license plate camera. Um, that way, the police now would have two. Um, additional cameras at Railroad Park in Riverbank Park. Um, the Cribs cameras are going to be handled under the, the current grant. Um, there was also some police body cameras, upgrade to the police, police computers, um, new electronic speed signs for throughout the borough, um, and then some other miscellaneous upgrades to uh, police lockers, um, possibly uh, the re-lettering of the, in the, the re-lettering of the police cars. The um, initial paperwork that was submitted was for $97,500. Um, we did get notification that we were approved. Um, we were approved for a slightly lesser amount of $75,000. That, um, and then the electronic signatures went out to both uh, Dave and Nancy. So we should be receiving more information on that here shortly. I did get in contact with them. Um, it, it is a very simple process. Uh, they send the money to us up front, and all we have to do is make sure we track what it's being spent on. And then once the funds are expended, we just have to put together a little report with the canceled checks and invoices of what it was spent on and send it into them for uh, clarification and, and verification of what it was spent on. And uh, I can help uh, Lisa along the way with that. And uh, I believe I was going to check with Craig. A lot of it is just equipment purchases. So I don't even believe we have to go through a formal bidding uh, process with it. Are they through uh, Coast Guard? I'll, I'll speak with the chief on that, but I believe most of the equipment you could be purchasing is through Coast Guard. Um, the larger ticket item was the street cameras because uh, we were looking at putting some pretty much at any, any entrance point or exit point to the borough. So in case anything happens, the police are able to at least see a vehicle coming or going. Uh, so um, that was a larger item that may, we may have to look at bidding, but we can work through that process as we go. Who does Grant have a name? I never did get a name. Um, it's is slightly through the, the, the program of uh, community development, but there was no set name for the grant. Um, there were initials, Matt, and I'm sorry, I don't have them here with me. I apologize, I don't have them either. Uh, from, but from talking with DCD, it's not necessarily a grant that you just apply for. It's a grant that has to be sponsored by a legislator. So uh, Senator Costa sponsored Verona for this grant. Yes, he had contacted me and said, let's do this. And I actually got all the pricing for all the items that you mentioned. I already have paperwork on that. I think I shared showed it. To you me. did, yes. So I, I did all of that too. So that's done, and I am thrilled. Thank you for you know, bringing that up. I was going to ask about it, but you beat me to it. Yep. So thank you. And that's all I have. Thank you. Oh uh, wait, Matt, did you skip number five. Uh, oh, for this first three lining. Yeah. We still have not received an update from the county for the nose to proceed on that. Oh, okay. This is one, Jay, was this already in our budget for this year as part of the matches that we were having? To play, um, you know? Yeah, it, sh uh, it should be. It was, this is the sanitary on First Street? Correct. That's Bruce. Yeah. Yeah, we, we were aware of that at the end of last yeah, year. So. That should be in there. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a tough match. It's like a uh, the CDBG matches are 35%. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm done. Mr. Alexander. Thank you. I apologize. I remember the other item on my report that I forgot to uh, put down on, on the uh, agenda. We had been, uh, we had approved two resolutions for the Allegheny County vacation, vacant property program. One was 812 uh, First Street, I believe, and the other was on West Railroad Street at, at Dover. 515. 515? East Railroad. 515 East Railroad because it was east of the tracks. Right. <laughs> I, I learned that those roads don't run east and west, they're east of the tracks and west of the tracks. <laughs> but anyway, we approved those resolutions and I had submitted them to the county uh, because they've been faltering for some time for whatever reason. The county had written me back 
that there were additional forms that had to accompany the resolutions with additional documentation that they required, uh, including uh, conflicts of interest forms and, and a few other things. Um, I had traveled to each of the two properties so I could uh, fill out the forms. Uh, I met Nancy here at the borough building. She happened to be here. She was able to pull the files for me in, in order to uh, get the additional information that was pro uh, required. She actually helped me handwrite them out because I'm not too good at that right now. And I was able to submit that to Brooke Wynn at the county. And she advised me that those are on the agenda for approval. So I, I, I thought that the public might be interested to hear that. I apologize for forgetting that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right, uh, we are gonna continue now with our committee reports. Um, first up is normally Mr. Forbeck of the DPW and uh, uh, Refuse and Sewers Committee, um, but he's not here today. I think it's possible maybe, Chris, do you have some information? Uh, for Mike on, oh. I do. Oh, okay. Yes, good evening. I will be discussing the first agenda item for Mr. Forbeck, which is the Walk Works opportunity. This grant opportunity was recently brought to our attention and it is of particular interest because it's often for things that are components of comprehensive plans. As many of you will recall, we recently reduce the 10K we had budgeted for comprehensive plan for this year. So this is an opportunity to still jumpstart a portion of it. It's sponsored by the Pennsylvania Department of Health and the Pennsylvania Downtown Center for the development of plans and policies to increase safe and accessible opportunities for residents to be physically active by walking, bicycling, wheeling, and using transit connections within our community. Awards range between 10 and 20K for the development of what's called active transportation plans and up to 5K to assist with what's called a complete streets policy. There is no match re required. So Mike and I are working on submitting an application for both an active transportation plan for Verona as well as a complete streets policy. So far we do have letters of support from BOP, OFONS, and Mike was also able to obtain one from the county. So we're excited about that. That's all I have. If there's any questions, I can answer them. Um, okay. Um, thank you for that information, Trish. It's always nice to get a grant that doesn't have a match. Um, I wonder in, in, if it's possible down the road if you or Mike could email all of us some more specific information. I could all that in my head. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. thank you. The other couple of things on uh, Mr. Forbeck's report involve the aluminum can collection. And I believe I have printed out here an email from him. I do print out an email from Mike about this. Uh, do you guys remember seeing it? Uh, we had, yeah, someone find it from our. Yeah. One of the things had to do with um, fertilizing. And uh, I was not aware of this company, Mills Lawn Care, before. And um, I had scanned something I received from the chief who received it from someone from this lawn care uh, company. And uh, it wasn't the bill. Um, it was an estimate of what to do for the first step. Although I don't know what we're going to do about the first step because I think the time has passed for doing the first step of fertilizing. So um, I, I personally think we should just go ahead with this particular company 
it doesn't seem like it's all that expensive and let AJ um, let AJ um, coordinate efforts with Milt's lawn care and just let them figure out the fertilizing. I mean, the first step was about $600 for all three parks. Uh, I think we can handle that. Um, so did, did anyone find that email? Is there anything more? Yeah. He just said, uh, you know, this is who we've used in the past. We were, uh, AJ did not know much about it, so he didn't have an opportunity to coordinate with them. Uh, he said, since the fertilizer is time sensitive, we should probably uh, pay for this and go forward with it. And so we'll need to be done this month. We could then possibly look into other bids in the future. The, the invoice or bill, or, or maybe it's a quote, is for $119 for Railroad Park, $395 for Cribs and 87 for Riverbank for a total of $601. We talked to AJ and AJ will coordinate the grass cutting and other maintenance with the fertilizer uh, placement and, and we'll have, he would have Milt Lawn Care contact AJ to coordinate. Um, and he would also let, let council know when fertilizing is take place, taking place and we'll advise the public and Parks and Rec. Um, that's what Mike, that's for Mike on that matter. Um, I did talking to um, a couple members of the rec board in the past, and I think even with um, uh, with RAA, I do think there are additional treatments that we may want to look to do in the future for the fields, other than just fertilizing. I think um, you know rolling and, and aerating and that sort of thing. I'm not sure exactly what all is is needed, uh, whether it's annually or or you know biannually or whatever, but I think, um, I mean, I agree with Mike that, that, hey, we should go ahead with this now. Um, it's not a large amount. It'll, it'll keep it, keep the, the fields fertilized for now. And then we can look into other, other options for, for either later in the year or next year, as far as additional treatment. Yeah, so I was in touch with uh, AJ about getting in touch with Milk Lawn Care. I have the information for him in his mailbox and he's agreeable to doing that. He's just waiting for us to approve using them uh, tonight. So, um, and the only other thing that I wanted to make sure is that the public knew whenever these people would come and fertilize and maybe close off the park for, for a day or however long you're supposed to do that so kids are not running around on the field. So that is, is sensitive because there's activities going on in the park. Yes, Rhoda. Being that we're trying to budget our money, um, is RAA going to pay for part of this? Uh, I'm not. They use the field all the time. Well, and I feel we need to share our responsibility. Well, there is a an agreement with RAA. Um, that outlines the different responsibilities between RA and the borough. I don't think that this this particular I think this particular cost is is one that's that's supposed to be covered by the borough. They cover it, things like infield and and things like that. And we actually, um, that's something that'll need to be updated that that agreement. But that's something we could discuss at a later time. Uh, what I also suggest, uh, we're talking about additional treatments. Uh, what I would suggest out here, especially in this park, uh, weed control. I mean, the weeds are really getting bad there. And uh, I think that's what fertilizer point. down there just feeds the weeds. I mean, it's just fertilizer. I think it would be a nice thing to treat the, uh, the weeds. Do it in the spring, do that in the fall, do that for a couple of years, and we have no problem anymore. I thought that's what it was for. I don't know. It's a fertilizer. I don't know what that means. This is just for, I believe this is just for, um, well, this is for all three parks. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Um, Take a look at the weeds out here. It's just uh, unsightly. Uh, we do a lot of community park things there, and it just doesn't look good. Yeah, I mean, Railroad Park's one of the ones included on this. Mm -hmm. So. Right. Something to think about. I was under the impression that the treatment was supposed to be specifically for weed control. Well, that wasn't stated in the report there. It's just fertilizer. So I didn't know. I, I just was. Okay. So I just made it. it, wasn't, it wasn't. Yeah. 
Anyway, um, so does someone want to make a motion to have Milk Lawn Care take care of our fertilizing needs as stated? I'll make that motion. Okay. Second? Second. Second. First by Mr. Matlin, second by Mr. Sutchevich. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, good. Um, and then do you have Mike's uh, email there about the aluminum can collection? Yeah. He says a request was made to place the can recycling trailer back by the Boy Scouts. They will be sorting the cans to assure only recyclable material is sent to the recycler. The trailer was returned by AJ to the parking lot, but Nancy felt we should have council agree to place the trailer. Uh, Mike shared his thoughts and experience. The sorting of cans brings a better product and more money for the borough, both through re direct, direct recycling money and 904 grant. The, South, the scouts get a small stipend of the recycling money, typically $50, and that was out of around $200 per recycling event. We will have more tonnage toward our 904 grant. The one time we collected last year was 400 pounds. If we continue to do this, it could be four or five times as much. The location and signage should change to make it more presentable. I talked to AJ and he will move the trailer to the back and out of direct sight, and the sign will be redone. He said he will follow up on that when he returns. I, I, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. The way I'm understanding this is that it's it's um, it sounds like it's dependent on the on the ton or the uh, the tonnage or the or the weight. All right. In, in past years, what did we accumulate the mess that we dealt with? I I don't have. I mean, Mike Mike says um, the one there was a one time collection last year. I'm not familiar with the details of this he said it was it was around 400 pounds and he says that if we collected this regularly it could be four or five times as much what does that mean? I, i'm just reading what mike shared i don't have any additional information I, I don't know. That's something to investigate. I mean, if you're sharing, perhaps we should have some hanging from both sides. Well, I do think that, um, sorry, the, uh, the compromise here, at least in this moment, it, it, we might not be done discussing it, but he's going to move it back behind the building so he won't be able to see it. So I think that's the making progress right there. And for now, that's the best we can do. And, and we'll keep looking at it. It seems like it's financial, financially beneficial to the town. Well, we don't have numbers yet, so we can't say that. Okay, well, we have to see and get numbers, I guess. Could, I mean, this is Mike's background. Maybe he could, when he's back, he could, could round up some better numbers to share before, uh, I mean, we make a final decision on, on whether to... Um, Keep this program going. I, I mean, I don't, I don't disagree that it'd be better to have more information about it. And Mike could probably speak to it better than any of us at this point. Okay. Um, moving on, um, Mr. Matlin, go ahead with your. All right. Thank you, thank you, Mr. <laughs> President. Um, I just have the April finance statements. Um, that everyone in council should have received um, yesterday. I apologize for a little bit of delay there. I was hoping to get them out a little bit sooner. Um, but uh, the first one um, that everyone should have is the balance sheet. Um, so this is the first time we've, we've had a full balance sheet. Um, it shows uh, our assets, liabilities, and equity for all of the major fund types, um, which are general fund, fire truck, capital fund, sanitary sewer, uh, police asset seizure, 
which is actually just um, just opened at the S and T bank account because um, we need to keep that money separate and the liquid fuels um, fund. Um, so I, I think this gives us a much more complete picture than the uh, the bank balances that we were receiving previously. Um, so uh, and that's something that we've discussed with with Susan and with with Rachel at, at Bookminders in our past uh, meeting. So I appreciate what she's done to get those together for us. Um, the other report, actually, before I go into the next one, does anyone have any questions on the balance sheet? Maybe for the sake of the record and the public, you could just read, you know, the, the, the numbers. Um, yeah, I was gonna, yeah, I was going to talk about, uh, there was a few numbers I was going to go off, but um, the, uh, let's see, the current total uh, checking the savings account amount in the general fund is $365,908.25. Uh, the fire truck capital has $4,547.26. Uh, the sanitary sewer has $298,733 and 67 cents. Um, the seizure fund does not um, show up as having a balance, but in, in the account, because we just opened that. Um, but the liquid fuels has $226,926.86. And um, those are the, the cash balances. Um, I won't go through all of the num all the other numbers that for as far as total assets and liabilities, um, but if anyone has questions on those, I can entertain those now and try to answer them. No, I just make a comment that um, I did go to the bank on Friday and talked to Nicole and asked her to update our online banking so that I can transfer that. There's ten thousand nine hundred twenty-eight dollars and nineteen cents that should be in the seizure fund. It, yes, that's correct, and that shows up as um, due from the general fund. So um, you will see things like that that are that are due that are maybe in transit, um, because um, we do we we are pretty much writing our checks only out of the general fund. Mm -hmm. So you know we might write a check for something that's sewer expense but then there'll be an inner fund transfer between the general fund and the sewer fund so that it gets accounted for and will show up accordingly in our you know, future statements and, and the, uh, the, the audit, of course, at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So um, that's just so we don't have you know, five different accounts that we're writing checks from. Um, it keeps it a little bit simpler that way. Um, so the, hopefully that explains some of that. The, the tax clearing, line under under other current assets that's um that's taxes that have been collected but haven't been formally deposited or, or cleared so that's another one that's that's kind of uh as, as rachel explained to me kind of you know in limbo at the time of the report um but but it does show up there um the liabilities um you will see you know the amounts due to the sewer fund from the general fund, um, that uh, $581,124, that's where that currently stands. Um, and you'll see other, other amounts due, you know, like I said, based on those inner fund transfers, like transfer into the police seizure fund or, um, or other amounts um, uh, such as the sanitary sewer, which I'll get to in a, in a second here. Any other questions on that one? Okay. Um, the next one I'll go on to is the budget versus actual report. Um, so this, it, the, the, the spreadsheet had a few different tabs. The first tab was just the general fund um, collapsed so that it, it showed um, just the major categories of, of income and expenses. Um, it kind of helps to give you a big picture view rather than 
going through pages upon pages, but in the other tabs on that spreadsheet, you can see um, each of the funds broken down in detail. Um, you have the amount uh, spent or, or accumulated to date uh, from, or sorry, not to date, to the end of April uh, of this year from starting January 1st. There's the budgeted amount, and then there's the, the amount over or under the budget, and, and then the percent of the budget that's been expended there. So um, just to give you some, some, some of the bigger numbers there, the total income um, that we've uh, had in the general fund through April 30th for the year is $877,867.53, which is 43% of the budget. And total expenses in the general fund through April 30th are $534,013.58, which is 27% of the budget. Um, uh, there are a few large receipts that, um, that show up when you, when you go to the detail. Um, there's $70,500.47 in liquid fuels money that we received in April. Um, so that, went into, that was from the state um, and that went into the liquid fuels account. Um, the, there was $16,095.86 collected from Oakmont Municipal Authority, which is the water authority, um, and that's for um, sewer receipts. Um, there was also $428,000 in roughly in real estate taxes collected um, in uh, the, the, I believe in the month of April, or month of April. Um, so any questions on that report? So for those two, I'll, I'll get to the bills and disbursements next and that'll be a separate motion. But for the first two, the balance sheet and the budget versus actual, actual report, I will uh, ask for a motion to accept the monthly financial statements for the month of April. I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the monthly financial statements for the month of April. I'll second that. Uh, any uh, other questions or comments? First by Mr. Matt, one second by Mr. Sachevich. Questions or comments? No, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the final report, as far as the finances goes, is the uh, the bills or disbursements. Um, now, this is a list from um, April 14th, uh, which I believe was the day after our last meeting when we last approved the bills uh, through uh, today, May 11th. Um, so you'll see the dates. Some of the dates would be today. I believe those are bills that um, have been prepared, but have not yet been signed. Um, so this uh, this is gonna have a little bit more detail than we had um, last month. Um, there is a brief memo on, on a lot of the items uh, when, in, when that information is available, uh, as well as the fund class, um, you know, which, which fund it came uh, to or came out of. Um, so the total here of, of bills to be paid is 207,000. $936.10. Um, you should see that at the very bottom of the last page. Um, just printed correctly. Yep. And um, just to call attention to, to the two largest disbursements, um, there's an Alcasan. That was our quarterly Alcasan bill. Um, that was due, and that was a, a total amount of $159,379.26. Uh, there was also a single Duquesne light bill, um, which I believe is is for street lights around town um, of five thousand dollars, fifty two five thousand fifty two dollars and thirteen cents. Um, and I know I think Nancy can attest in past recent months that bill is typically up around that amount in the four thousand to five thousand dollar range. Um, so those are just the largest items, just to call your attention to that. Um, Again, it's it it's it's organized a little bit differently than than we're used to seeing, but I think um, 
the information that everyone had, had talked about or asked for last meeting or, or since then has been um, included here. So um, any questions on that I do have a report? Question, yeah. Uh, maybe you can help me. Uh, like say here, or, there's no amounts of how much bill is. Or is that where you have to go back to this um, page then, Dave? Yeah, so that, I don't know, this printed. Um, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, this printed a little bit goofy. Um, you actually have to go. Like you say, like the start of the general. Yeah, part. yeah. And so that would be for this first one. Yeah, we can maybe try to reprint that um, or make sure that um, for future yeah, printing. Uh, you see what I'm well, saying? It's, so, yeah, it's not good. Yeah, it's, it's not just good. in the for, the. It's just in the the page layout and the print right. setup. So Nancy, I can I can help sort that out for next time. But um, you should be able to see it all in one line on okay. the computer. Yeah. Oh, so basically, if I would just take this, rip it off, and go back to the first one here. And just yeah, it, add it, it should it line up. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Um, that's just in how it was printed. Okay. So. Well, you're using a shorter page. Yeah. Yeah. How it came over. Dave, I have one question. Liberty Power Holdings, what is that? Um, that is a, you know how like how you have PA Electric choice where you can choose your supplier or generator for the power? Duquesne Light's still going to present you a bill for transmission and distribution, <laughs> but you can choose, you know, ABC Electric to be your power generator, and then you still get that bill from Duquesne. This, um, so they're the supplier that was chosen. And, and I understand, as I understand, this was set up by uh, back when Bonnie Conway was here. Um, I've so never seen this before Liberty Power. It, it's been on past reports. Um, I, I mean, I, I know because I've in the past year I've asked about it. Um, and so we get the supplier bills directly from them and we get a separate distrib uh, distribution and transmission bill from Duquesne Light. So, um, does anybody monitor it? I know that I got caught on one of these uh, Pennsylvania power. They come out saving you money, then you forget about it, then it rolls over. And I had called Duquesne late at one time and said, what's this $25 fee? And they looked and, they, and the woman said, oh, you signed up for Pennsylvania power. She said, that's a lot of money. She said, you know, Duquesne Light is a little more expensive, but she said, I wouldn't go with any of those companies for that reason. They just keep rolling it over and you forget about it, you know, that you signed up for it. And that's what I did. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. And Nancy and I were just talking about that the other day that um, what I want to do is sit down and look at all of our, our Duquesne Light bills and Liberty Power bills just make a list of what we have and we can um we can probably check it with rachel she could probably uh just help make sure we're including everything that's that's been coming in and look at what we're paying what the rates are and then see if see whether that is something that we should keep doing or or switch to back to duquesne light or to another provider because if it's been like that for so long you're right it we may not be getting the best. Um, you might be saving here, but in the long run, every year it keeps going up and up without you knowing it because you forget that you signed on for that. Yeah, and there's a lot of, we have a lot of utility bills um, and there's a lot of different accounts for the various, um, meet, you know, there, for different street lights, for traffic lights, for uh, different parks, different buildings. Fire department. I mean, you name it. There's yeah. there's a, there's a ton of different meters, so they each have their own Duquesne Light account. So it'll take us a little while to sort through and and figure that out. But I agree, we do need to look at that yeah. um, further. So thanks for bringing that up. I want to mention a couple other things too. Um, see the Alpha Sand bill. That large bill, one hundred and fifty nine thousand, was actually a past two bill from November. So we currently have another bill for approximately $153,000 that's going to be uh, paid. And, but I do think because of our new organization of the, um, of the way the money's being uh, separated out, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head exactly how much we have in the school fund right now. Um, but I think we can cover the $153,000 as well. Um. It, 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 I just happen to know that that's coming up because they just got the bill and it's going to be going to Rachel. Oh, yeah. okay. 
Um, yeah, I hadn't really looked at that or. Yeah, you would but, know about it. Okay. Okay, but I just wanted to point out the other one. If you look on there, it, it's from November twentieth. These are the kinds of things that we are finding as as I work in the office. And the other thing is, um, we we don't know exactly what Card Connect is, and I'm looking at that and. Possibly we may eliminate that because I don't think we use it. Well, I think we know what it is. It's it's a it's a fee for receive you know re receiving and taking credit cards as payment. But we don't we don't ever take don't credit cards that. as payment. Right. So, um, you know we've we've talked about this. It's come up and mm -hmm. it's not as simple as it seems to just cancel it. But for whatever reason, it was not canceled months or years ago. So we're going to look to cancel that. And we also found um, a situation from 2020 with paychecks. And I yeah. don't know how that. We, uh, so we discontinued using paychecks after 2019, December 2019. And during um, the year, during all of 2020 and the first quarter of 2021, we were using uh, Paymark or Landmark Business Solutions. And we so we weren't using paychecks other than to file the uh, put out the uh the w4s there's w w2s i'm sorry um there was a dormant account fee from paychecks of around 50 to 70 dollars each month for the entire year of 2020 that um i'm looking to see if they will give us a credit or or a credit you know, refund or credit towards our current bill because we've now gone back to paychecks. Um, so um, that's something else that that it, it's no longer being charged, but um, it, it should have been canceled a while back. So um, there there are a bunch of uh, little things like that that we're trying to sort through and make sure that. Um, what we're receiving is 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 up to date and current. Yeah. So do you need a motion? You want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the list of bills um, dated May eleventh, twenty twenty one. First by Mr. Matlin, second by Mrs. Provenza. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Um, thank you. The, the only other thing I want to say is uh, happy 150th birthday to Verona yesterday. Um, uh, I think uh, it was a challenging weather scenario on Saturday for the uh, kickoff event, but um, I want to thank uh, everyone who participated to make that happen and uh, the mayor for speaking, um, uh, Frank Santucci and uh, Gary Rogers, the other speakers, I believe. and. Um, I look forward to the next 150 years and beyond. So this isn't the, the last of the celebrations. There's going to be more um, throughout the year. So um, happy birthday. That's all I have. Oh, did you want me to bring that up? Yeah, I thought that's what we... Yeah, no, that's fine. I forgot all about that. So the uh, speaking of things that we've found that... Um, need to be addressed there. When we got new copier, a new copier and printer for uh, the borough office here, I think one's the copier is in the main office room and the printer is in the police department office. Um, there was an old leased copier and printer that um, I'm not sure when the lease officially ended, but it was not, um, the lease was not fully terminated and the equipment was not returned. Uh, I believe Nancy, it's in the police. It's in jail. It's in the jail, <laughs> in the police department. So um, Nancy's been working very diligently to try to get to the bottom of this, and um, basically they they've given us two options to close things out. We can either accept a, and I believe this is what you sent to all of council in the last day or two. We can accept a payoff that would then um, in, it would basically be a purchase of the equipment so that we would own it. And 
I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I believe it. Do you have it yeah, with I you? Do. Um, the total payoff to keep the equipment will be $2,177.53. And the total payoff to pay it off and return it would be $1,029.25. So, but that doesn't include, apparently they want us to ship this this copier printer thing, which, you know, is yay high and, you know. It's, it's a business copier, yeah, so. Um, um, I need to find out more information. Yeah, I think, I think um, we have a decision to make as council as far as what, and that, those quotes are good until the end of the month. Yeah, I don't know what he said about five business days, or was that, am I confusing that with something else? Where do they have to be shipped to? Good question. I don't know. It they, says St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> uh, so our guys, if it's local, our guys can deliver it. Yeah. I, uh, they were supposed to give more details. It says in the quote to, they would give more details on shipping after, if, after we chose that option, but I think we need more details before we decide. That sounds like um, a catch-22, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I do think that the sip, shipping costs could be substantial. I don't know yeah. how, uh, that's not something I've dealt with before, but um, it, it, regardless, it's a decision for council to make about whether or not we want to keep the equipment and not have the hassle of paying it off, but then we have the hassle of what to do with it. So. Is it metal? Well, it's, uh, it's it's, a, it's a, there's all sorts of components, metal, glass, plastic. It's, I mean, it's a business it's copier. Worth it's, it ain't worth that much. Uh, it, it might be worth more as a, if it's a usable piece of equipment, but I have no idea how. Sell it, I don't know. Yeah. But it, um, anyway, we ha according to, it says good through 531.21. I'll do more research, I'll send more emails. We're back here on the 25th can make a decision about what to do and then we have to pay this off this is another thing that's been going on since last june or july and not been paid attention to and taken care of earlier than now um so just want to bring that up um but i also dave before we're done with finance just wanted to say a big shout out and thank you to um Susan and Bookbinders for getting our finances to the point where we can present this particular type of report, the detail that it has. And um, I just feel very confident now that um, uh, everything is going in, into the category that it's supposed to be going into. And uh, it gives us a clear picture of where we stand. So, yeah, I agree. Thank you. Yes, thanks. All right, uh, now uh, we're complete with uh, budget finance, right, Dave? Yes, that, that completes my report. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Trisha and Ms. Walker. Thank you, Madam President. I have an unstable internet connection, so I have my video off. Let me know if my audio starts to diminish in quality. The first item on my agenda for tonight is just a quick update on the websites and forms for building and inspection applications for permits. So I'm gonna put in the chat now our updated for a website, thanks to Dave Matlin for so nicely displaying this, which includes links to BIU, along with contact information for our BIU representative, both phone and email, however, as the mayor already mentioned tonight, some of us have had trouble either directly getting in touch with our rep or have had members of the public reach out to them. I know I've also had a few people reach out to me as well. Um, thank you, Madam President, for reaching out to them. If you could just keep us abreast of that, um, we will help to relay that information. So I also want to let everyone know that our next ordinance committee meeting was bumped back a week due to the primary elections next week. So we'll actually be meeting on Monday, May 24th from 4 to 5.30 via Zoom. Susan has advised that we start inviting whomever would be interested in attending these committee meetings um, attend. So I will um, provide the Zoom link that we can share um, on our borough Facebook page, um, perhaps the website as well. 
The next item on my agenda is just a update on the rotary sign, the welcome sign project. I do see that Jeff Pepper is still on the call. So Jeff, if you would like to jump in at any point, feel free to do so if you can, if you're still listening right now. Otherwise, Jeff has prepared a few talking points for me to share with everyone about the project. Um, I think some of them may have been emailed as well. Hi, Jeff. Hey, Trish. Hi, everybody. I'll just start talking and you go ahead and jump in if anything's unclear, if you have more information. So um, project approval, we now do have full support from the Verona Chamber of Commerce after Kier Ewing has circulated the information to the board. Um, Mayor Dave had previously raised some concerns about the location of the sign. Originally, it was technically going to fall into Penn Hills, but we have Resolve that by moving the location of the two on ARB to directly where the current signs are. We'll actually be using, I believe, the same post, but just displaying our new signs um, where, where the current wooden um, older signs are. If there are any other objections, feel free to speak now or forever hold your peace. The second item is just the sign design. So Jeff uh, had a public comment period where there was a survey that was circulated online on three local Facebook pages. We received 70 survey responses, perhaps a few more since I first got this email. There was an overwhelming support for one particular design. So that is the design we are going to move forward with. However, next item on Jeff's list for me to share with you is the sign color. We thought for sure the purple and gold was going to be the desired choice for Verona, given that it's our colors, however, um, a lot of people did not like that. So we are planning to do a second survey to ask people to vote on the color scheme for the sign design that we did decide on. Um, thanks to all council who provided some input on the color and the process going forward regarding that. Funding, we do have a generous offer of financial support from the Verona Chamber of Commerce. They've offered to split the cost with the Rotary, which is incredible. Um, we will be incorporating their logo into the sign along with the rotary logo. And lastly, the location of the third sign. So I mentioned the first two signs will be where the current signs are on ARB, but we'd like to do a third sign along Wildwood. However, we are still determining that location. So Jeff and I will be getting together on Wednesday to take a look at that area. If anyone would like to join us, just let me know. Jeff, did I miss anything? No, you got it all, thanks. Are there any questions from council at this time regarding the Rotary Sign Project? Yeah, Trish, um, I did talk to Kevin uh, Ewing from the chamber today, uh, and just in terms of the color, and he did his own little personal poll or whatever of chamber people, and um, they were all pretty unanimous in liking the purple and gold color. I just wanted to mention that while we're all here. Thank you for sharing that. I I didn't envision it in any other way. I was surprised we got so feedback, so much feedback to suggest otherwise. But thank you for sharing. Trish, what were the colors that were selected, or that had the most votes? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, when we uh, when we did the survey, we didn't really ask about color. We were focusing more on the overall uh, design and layout of the sign. Uh, so the examples that we use mostly had the purple and gold. So but we didn't ask anybody if they liked purple uh, or not. But I think a half a dozen people uh, in the you know uh, in the comments section uh, expressed some uh, dissatisfaction with with the purple. Again, if that's half a dozen people, we don't know if that's a uh, uh, there's a, a vocal minority or whether that actually represents a, a lot more. We just have no idea. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. And thank you, Jeff, again, for spearheading this project. We are very grateful for all of your efforts and the efforts of the Rotary Club. Great, thank you. And uh, by the way, uh, Karen Brooks from Rotary also has been uh, playing a big role in this. So thanks to her as well. Yes, absolutely. The last item I have for tonight is 
as Craig alluded to earlier, the resolution for acquisition of the lot located at 246 West Railroad for the purpose of a community garden. So initially, we assumed we would go through the vacant property recovery program to acquire this property, which is an inexpensive way to acquire lots typically that have a lot of taxes for um, much, much, much less. In this case, um, less than $3,000. Um, I would still recommend that tonight we um, move forward with approving this resolution and going through the county. However, with the caveat that the updated timeline also as Craig mentioned is now looking to be late spring of 2022 slash early summer, which means that we may not even be able to have a build until next fall of 2022, which is about 18 months from our initial application. So. Um, I don't see any harm since there's no cost to just continue the county option as a backup option. However, if Craig can confirm, and I think he can tonight, that he has a way of doing essentially the same process, condemning the property and working with the solicitors from the school district and others to clear the liens for the same or less cost, I would recommend that we also pursue that option so that we could acquire the property uh, ideally in time for a fall build this year, which would be about August. Um, worst case, definitely for next spring. Um, so at this time, I'll make a motion for council to approve the resolution to continue with the vacant property recovery program to acquire 246 West Railroad. So the resolution of council of the borough of Verona approving that the acquisition and subsequent disposition of uh, partial pro vacant property known as, uh, and I don't know what the Lawton Block of this yeah. particular property is, it's Lawton Block 0365-F-0393, uh, known, would be in accord with the comprehensive plan of the municipality. A motion would be in order. Yes. Yes, correct. Thank you, Craig. So yes, I am making that motion. A second. Okay, so first is by Trish Redzak Showalter, second by Ray Setrovich. Any other questions or uh, comments about this resolution before we pass it? Yeah, what was the total? I know there was an estimated cost range. Was yeah. that? Um, Do you have that, Trish? I can pull that up. It was less than we thought because they did waive the entire parcel fee. Oh, okay. They 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 waived the parcel fee. I don't here. I don't know which part of that is parcel fee. Trish is going to pull it up. Oh, okay. I believe the parcel fee is three thousand dollars. You pay a closing cost. And you pay one year's worth of taxes on the property, county taxes. So it'll be between. $1,600 and $2,600, depending on the appraisal. I'll put okay. that in chat. Um, okay. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I think that is a lot, significantly less than what we originally expected for that. Um, so that this motion would be to continue with that uh, application process with the county. We wouldn't be paying that until closing, correct? Correct. Um, which could be, I guess, early next year. We're not sure. Um, now, I, I guess this isn't directly related to the motion, but Craig, if you were to look at, at an alternative option to try to do it sooner, would we, would there be additional costs that we would incur or, or would that, I, I guess, I'm just trying to get an idea of what costs we might incur either way. Do you, do you have any? With an eminent domain action, you would uh, I think you would incur the cost of filing the eminent domain action. So I don't believe there would be any response because you're working with us. Um, you're going to be at similar cost. Right? The, the cost that you're getting from the county right now is uh -huh. So it might be that that's the more cost effective way to go and to find out if there's a way that uh, the property owner can let us out of the property earlier. Okay. Um, the error of the property owner, because the property owner is going to be. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yep. And I will conform a copy of this resolution uh, for signature. Okay. 
You have it, buddy. I do. Okay, so um, any other uh, comments or questions? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, no opposed. Anything else, Trish? No, I just didn't know, Craig, I was having a hard time hearing you at the end. I wasn't sure if you still wanted at this point to discuss anything further regarding your option to condemn it. The, the only hesitation I have at what you just said, what I believe I caught is that I don't think that Grow Pittsburgh will let us begin to build on a property that is not legally ours because of complexities with their funding source. So I, I said that uh, Dave Matlin that the price that you're getting this for is, is, is pretty phenomenal. So we have to look at that cost analysis a little bit better. You know, I think that going through the legal process, you you probably get it sooner than you went through the through the county uh, vacation program. But I'm not sure that it would be cheaper. So you and I have to talk about that a little bit a little bit more. So right now we're moving forward with the vacation property program because. You can, it's free, and you don't have to pay anybody to be Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you, Craig. Thanks, Rich. And that's all I have, Madam President. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Sutchwich, you're next. Not much going on with the fire and police. So the only thing I do want to say is last month I I said we wanted to start negotiations on a police contract. And after re, uh, finding out from Mr. Matlin and I went through my old emails. Their contract is not up until December of 2022, so we have we have plenty of time to um, to do that. But I haven't heard anything, nothing from anybody, any problems. So great, thank you, thank you, um, Mrs. Alba. Thank you. Um, yes, <clears throat> I have riverbank parking. Uh, park parking. Uh, apparently, I know our street it has become a busy, a busy street, especially come summer with the nicer weather. It is a narrow, narrow street too, and it's with a uh, the a lot of action going on at the pickleball court. Um, a lot of people coming into town to come down and play. Um, parking hasn't been an issue for the residents that live along that road. Um, you know, I look at, I, um, we're looking into, you know, to see different solutions. Um, somebody had suggested maybe putting a barrier along the road. Um, I know people have garages there, you know, sometimes they get blocked or on garbage days, that has been an issue too. So I don't know what the best solution is. Is it going to be putting parking lines down there? Um, you know, that was one thought process. It's something that we would like to discuss further with. Um, the rec board too to see what other solutions we can come up with. But I know Art Street all the way down, you know, come summertime with all the different boat clubs and everything. I mean, that is <laughs> maybe eventually looking into a parcel that we can make, you know, have a community parking lot down that way. Um, maybe an idea. But um, in the meantime, you know, I don't know what to say to do. For the residents that live there that are happy with the way the parking situation is. I know every street has their parking problems. I mean, North Avenue has had a parking issue for how many years now that, you know, it's broken quite often. I mean, even on Center Avenue, you know, somebody parks in front of my house, okay, you know, it's a public street, so it's hard to please everybody. But um, it is an issue that we are working on. And the next rec board will be in June. It'll be the First Tuesday, which would be June first, and that's all I have. Thank you, Mrs. Loalbo, and of course, last but not least, our <laughs> communications committee chair Sylvia Provenza. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President, and good evening, everybody. It's good to be back. We'll start with newsletter. We're currently. Uh, accepting ads and articles for the newsletter. Uh, the uh, two items are due. Thank you, Craig. The two items are due on uh, Tuesday, June the 1st. And we would ask that you please get these articles in and these ads early 
so that we can get it to the printer in a timely manner. And um, for the articles, we can send the articles to Donald Wharf, our editor, and that would be at Verona Newsroom at gmail.com. And I will be more than glad to take your ads, and that would be at 412 828 7726. Chamber of Commerce. Uh, military banners are all sold and they're actually at the printers right now being printed. <clears throat> and uh, the proceeds from the banners are going to be given to our garden club. And uh, as an officer of the garden club and a member, of course, I would really like to thank the Chamber of Commerce. We are so grateful for your generosity and uh, thank you so very much. You are really appreciated. Uh, the dues continue to come in to the chamber, and uh, that is certainly appreciated too, especially since many of the businesses have uh, struggled with closed doors and businesses. So that is a very good sign, and we're appreciative. Uh, last Thursday, May the 6th, our Chamber of Commerce uh, Scholarship Committee interviewed six of our Verona students from Riverview High School. And uh, this was for the Charles McKinley Scholarship. And we are pleased to tell you that all six of these students from Verona had a very, very high grade average. And they will be awarded the Charles McKinley Scholarship at the uh, graduation, um, whenever they graduate from high school. So they will be awarded then. And uh, we send out congratulations to each and every one of these six children, these six students, and we certainly wish them the very best. Um, next, car cruise. Good news, there will be a car cruise, and it's going to be Saturday, August the 14th. And I don't know how many of you know, but it is the silver anniversary of our Verona car cruise. And I want to extend a great big thank you to our Mayor Dave, and uh, along with Lou Race, who for a number of years worked with him, he doesn't now, he has since moved away. But Dave has done a great job keeping this going for 25 years. So, so Dave, to you, thank you so much. You've done a great job, and I know you will continue to do it. Thank you. It was a combined effort between Ray, or I mean, I'm sorry, Lou Race and myself. Right, right. And well, you're, you're appreciated. Lou certainly was too. So. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dave, and continued good luck with it. Uh, Historical Society, we don't have a meeting this month, but next month, uh, our president, Rhoda, has planned a um, field trip to the Laurel Caverns. Uh, and I will have more information on that at our workshop meeting. Uh, Twin Boroughs Ministries, the community dinner is going to be held Wednesday, May the 26th, 4.30 to 6.30, and it will be at the Methodist Church. It will again be a grab-and-go dinner, and it will be hosted by the Oakmont Methodist Church. And as always, many thanks to Shirley and her helpers. They do a wonderful job, and they are appreciated. Now I'm excited about an event that's coming up, and that's the Botany and Booze event. And uh, before I get into it, I don't want to forget, I hope that the uh, property here at Railroad Park, grass will be cut and everything will be manicured and looking great because we will probably have a lot of people here and we want to make a nice appearance. The event's going to take uh, place on Saturday, May 22nd and May 23rd, and it will be from 12 noon till 4 p.m. each day. So it will be a great two days of live music, plant sales, craft vendors, food trucks, gift baskets, and uh, gift basket raffles, I should say, 50-50 raffles, and we will have brewery samplers. And the early bird tickets are $15, that's for one day, and both days would be $25 per ticket. And this will entitle you to go to all the different breweries that will be there, sample their beers, and then you can select what you like and you can take it home with you. So that's, that's just a really, really nice thing. And uh, you will be able to pay either by cash or by credit card. That has already been set up. 
And if you'd like more information on that, you can go to Verona Garden Club at gmail.com or you can check on Facebook and uh, oh, also on Instagram. And um, I am handling donation of gift baskets, gift cards, and gift certificates. And we would really appreciate, if you already haven't given, we would more than sincerely appreciate it. This is a fundraiser for our garden club because we've got to water the flowers and this is going to really be a big help in watering the flowers. So do give me a call. I would be more than glad to pick up whatever you would like to donate. And we'll look forward to seeing you at the River uh, Railroad Park here on Sunday, the 22nd. And of course, Saturday, excuse me, Saturday 22nd and Sunday the 23rd. And uh, lastly, uh, please don't forget Allegheny County Tax uh, Senior Discount of 30%. Uh, that is going to be ending on June 30th. So if you're 60 years old or older, you are eligible. And if you pay your tax before the due date, that will give you another 2% discount. So um, don't forget. And the uh, I've got applications from the county and they're here in the building on the rack as you come in the door. And I'll also give my uh, ALOM um, very brief. And that is, uh, they are currently still working on the ed educational conference, which is coming up soon. And uh, if you have any other questions or comments, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, Sylvia, I just wanted to say, um, we were up at the dinner uh, at, at the end of April and uh, Shirley was there and she asked me if I could ask council would they be willing to sponsor the dinner on August 25th? Oh. Um, which is the last Wednesday of August. We've done it two other years. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, unless anybody has any issues with that, I'll let her know that uh, we will sponsor the dinner on August 25th. Okay. Does anybody have a problem with that? No, it sounds good to me. Yeah, it sounds yeah. great. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. We'll, we'll put something together and... Uh, That'll be great. I did forget one thing. Um, tentatively, there is a Chamber of Commerce meeting scheduled for May the 18th at Intergroup. And if there's any change, we'll certainly let you know. That concludes my report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, oh, and just remember, May 18th is uh, election day, so remember the vote. Oh, yes. Thank you for reminding me. And uh, also, uh, Dave, is there anything from the COG? No, nope. we had a meeting uh, the la the fourth Wednesday of the month, um, but there's no, I have no updates. Okay. All right. Um, at this time, uh, council with your comments and public related items, please approach the podium or raise your virtual hand and clearly state your name and address and limit your comments to three minutes. Thank you. Do we have any virtual hands? I don't see any at this point. Um, give it a, uh, you know, we have Vince Floda. Vince got his hand up. Yep. Go ahead, Vince. Hi, I just have two things that I want to say real quick. Uh, I want to remind council that tomorrow the Rotary Club will be installing the sleeves for the memorial flags at Railroad Park at 2 p.m. I already talked to AJ and he's going to be meeting with us and the Rotary Club then to oversee the project. Um, and the doggy waste receptacles that we talked about in, I think it was last meeting, it might have been two meetings ago, they have been ordered and they should be here tomorrow. And uh, Lower Valley Athletic Foundation and Edda's or Stephanie from Edda's Doggy Daycare will be discussing possible locations to install the four doggy waste receptacles. I will keep you updated when I know more. That's all I have. Thanks, Vince. Uh, looks like uh, Kimberly Roller. Go ahead, Kim. 
Yes, I apologize. I need to update my Zoom. So I was unable to raise my virtual hand. Um, so I had uh, a couple questions I wanted to ask. Um, one was specifically about the Botany and Booze event that um, Sylvia had mentioned. There was some talk in our planning committees. Uh, we were trying to determine if we needed to rent um, outhouses or um, you know, Porta Johns for that event, or if we would be permitted to utilize the borough's uh, restrooms. Um, so I didn't know if you guys had any um, thoughts on that. Well, I think that when we have other large events here, that uh, like the car crews or whatever, people use the bathrooms in, this, in the building. So I don't see any reason why we couldn't do it for botany and goes. And then there's also, I'm sure, inner group would allow people to go in that bathroom. Okay. Um, as long as that's okay with you guys, then I will make a note on that and put that um, on our information areas. Um, and then I also had another question. Um, we have an additional sign. Uh, we hung up several signs in the borough, as you'll see, for the Botany and Booze event. Um, we had one sign that reflected the um, plant sale portion of the event. And we wanted to see if it was possible to hang that on the fence at Cribs Field near the basketball courts. Um, we had attempted to hang it at the viaduct, um, but that proved unsuccessful. So I wanted to see if I could get permission from council in order to hang that there. Um, again, that will only be up maybe tomorrow at the earliest, um, and that will be taken down immediately following the event on the 23rd. Does anybody have any issues with them? Um Hanging a sign no. Field. No, 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 that sounds fine. Everybody's saying you're good with that. Okay, great. I appreciate you guys very much. Thank you again for all of your um, support for the event and your support of the Garden Club. Um, I, you know, I will say for everybody uh, in the Garden Club, we're very happy to be able to help beautify Verona. And this event is so far proving to be um, a great fundraiser to continue those efforts and hopefully. Um, you'll hear us, you know, proposing new gardens that the garden club can help and, and different ways that we can improve our borough. So thank you again for all of your support. Okay, thanks, Kim. Are there any other hands? I don't see any. All right, then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll oh, second. Yeah. second by Ray. Any, any questions, comments? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, Opposed. All right. Thank you, everybody. Our first in person meeting in 13 months is a hybrid. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, there's a few things to work out. Yeah. So much better.